episode of Jay Lotto's Garage. As you can see, today we're going to talk about dune buggies. This is a fairly modern one. It's got a Subaru engine in it. But this one here, this is a legendary dune buggy because this is the very first Myers Manx. Uh, Bruce Meyer is the guy who, well, I didn't really invent the dune buggy, but made it what it is today. The first guy to make it out of fiberglass. And this is the very first car. He did this over 50 years ago, and uh, we are proud to say he's with us tonight. Bruce, come on in. Bruce, how are you? Hi, Jay. Now, how old are you going to be on your next birthday? I'll be 89. 89. There you go. And still doing it. And I, he, he's crawling in and out of this thing like a kid. Now, you've got quite a bit of history, because I remember reading about you when I was a teenager. You were a surfer, and you're a World War II veteran, and just kind of a artsy guy. I know your mom was kind of famous, wasn't she? My mom was a uh, song plugger, and we're talking about the language they used just after World War I. The, the song plugger was put in uh, stage plays and uh, all kinds of fancy places where the people could watch the new song being sung. Right. She was the singer for the Robbins Music Corporation, I believe, and yeah. uh, she was part of the Tin Pan Alley uh, cacophony. Okay, so now that's the art side. On the mechanical side, now this is fascinating. Your dad uh, knew Henry Ford, was a race car, wrote, did three Indianapolis 500s, correct? Well, he was, he was a riding mechanic. Right. Well, those were the days when he had two men in the car. Yes. And the mechanic had to hold on and pump oil. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I asked him, I said, Dad, what did, you, what did you do as a riding mechanic? He says, well, mostly we changed tires because tires wouldn't go 500 miles. Right. And he says, we always had two or three on the back. And of course, the other thing was I had to give the engine a squirt. Yeah. Because the oil wasn't automatic like it is today. And he knew all the, the Apollo, the Barney Oldfield. Yeah. He knew all the races yeah, of the Yeah, that day. was his part of my dad's language was all those great names of uh, Eddie Rickenbacker and Henry Ford and uh, Chevrolet and all those guys. They were all hanging out. They were just the plain people. They weren't big time yet. Right, right. So this is how this car comes to be. You got the art side from your mom that gives you the design and the mechanical side from your dad. That fair to say? Yes, that's true. Okay. So tell us how this whole thing started. I know people were running around in homemade cars for years, but what brought this whole idea together for you? I was part of that homemade car thing a little bit. At least I wasn't. My friends were, and I was hanging out with them. They were homemade sand dune buggies that uh, we played with in the local dunes, Pismo Beach and down um, by the El Godonis dunes. And those cars were made with steel frames. They always had Volkswagen based, mm -hmm. uh, at least when I came along. And uh, they were, because they were rear engine and they were very light, they had a huge uh, advantage over the old water pumper dune buggy, which had been around for many years, which were made out of old Fords and Chevys. The farmer hacked up this stuff and welded it together. Horrible looking welding. Right, right. <laughs> and those rate. were the days when you could just go on the beach in California and just... That's right. There was no, you can't bring that here. Well, you know, the beaches then, when the tide went out, we used to race our bikes, on, our motorcycles. Yeah. That's, we'd drive, we'd have what we call stake races. Right. We'd uh, drive a couple of stakes in the sand about the length of that room next door and uh, we'd race around the two stakes. And the cops would sit up there and watch us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try that now. Let me know how that works out. So t tell us about this car here. And this is, I, I can't get over, this is the very first one. And I I'm so glad you've kept it all these years. I remember seeing this in <laughs> Hot Rod and Car Craft, because everybody in the early 60s was building Hot Rods with 32 Fords. Obviously, here was a whole new idea to use fiberglass. And this is, boy, this is really thick. This is like boat fiberglass, isn't it? I'm a quality guy. Yeah. I'm a kid that uh, never grew up. I'm still um, loving those cars that Mickey and Donald and Minnie and Andy mm -hmm. Gump and all those guys drove. These funny little cars with great big wheels. There was really no room for their body, but that didn't matter. Right. I just carried that somehow subliminally into my later life, which I don't seem to, I think I ever dropped uh, my boyhood. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I, I, I did this in my spare time at night as kind of a spoof. Well, and, me... I, and I think I was driven by those cartoon cars. Yeah. Yeah. You will always be recognized as the guy who started it. Thank you, who, Jay. Who invented it. I mean, that's why I invited, it was an honor to have you here today. We had a bunch of guys show up waiting in line. They want to get their car signed because they wanted to meet you. I mean. Years from now, we'll always be remembered as the guy Thank who you. started you're, it. You're, you're very eloquent about that. Oh, no, that. no, I... it's, it's true. It's true because you were a hero of mine when I was a kid because you invented 
a new type of hot rodding, you know, using small engines that nobody, when I was a kid, you could buy Volkswagens used for $50 and people just throw them away. And all of a sudden you came along and utilized something that nobody had ever thought to utilize before. So those of us that enjoy automobiles and hot rodding, we owe you a great deal of gratitude because it's just a new different type of hot rodding and it all comes from you. So thank you very much. I defy anybody, but most people, give me the name of another dune buggy manufacturer. Nobody. This is the only name people know. It's the only one they know. We now have a service where we authenticate your dune buggy. Okay. And uh, it, it, providing a, it's, the re, it's a real Manx, you get a certificate, kind of a hero badge, yeah. and uh, new emblems and another tag that is uh, etched to uh, go into your car. So prove forever after that this is a real Myers yeah. Manx. Well, you know, there's a guy named Galen Glovier. He travels around. He confirms real Hemi cars. This is an actual Hemi car, it's not a copy. And of course, Ferrari has the Classique Center, where they, this is an actual Ferrari with no other. So this is kind of cool that you're doing that. So you, you are the Carroll Shelby of, uh, of dune buggies. So it's very cool. Wow. It's very cool. So let me ask you about, these are what, propane tanks? <laughs> no, those are a joke. No, the, that's part of the BS of. <laughs> I mean, they, were, were they propane tanks you just converted? No, no, they're not propane, they're oxygen bottles. Oxygen bottles, okay. Now, if I was gonna, become a human bomb and ram a fence <laughs> to let the other guys go through. I would put that up front, fill it with gas, and then crash into the wall. Because it looks like a World War II movie <laughs> where, okay, there's that Nazi tank. Johnson, get in there. And that's, that seems really... <laughs> that's really dangerous you to mean, me. Are you trying to look for a word, dumb? Yeah, uh, that, you know, maybe that's the word. But, but could I drive this one? I would love to be able to take it. Please, go. Really? Go, go, okay, go. Okay, this is cool. <laughs> I've been waiting for this since I was 14. <laughs> they never told me how much did this cost in 1964? The kit cost $965. $965, yes. wow. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. But then they got down into three or $400, right? That's, that's right. After I. I came to my senses and started using the floor pan. The Volkswagen floor pan had, of course, all the answers that I was not using. And uh, uh, suddenly I was able to make a profit at about 300 bucks. Wow, that's great. And look, I've got an official Myers Manx hat, too. So there you go. Where'd the name Manx come from? Roden Track Magazine. Oh. I, I was married to Shirley then. And yeah. one day Shirley went to work up, up the hill to Roden Track's offices. And, yeah. uh, took a piece of paper around the office and uh, it came back after 30 some answers, four of them said Manx. Oh, okay. Now those people are liter literate kinds of people and I thought I'll, I'll hang my hat on that. And then Elaine Bond, who was the real engine of that place, right. said it should be Myers Manx, Bruce. Right, yeah. I said, no, 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 no. Well, it stuck that way. Oh, she I says, like Myers Manx. She says, it'll, it'll be good for you someday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, see, she knows what she was talking about. But it's amazing how well this fiberglass structure is held up. I don't see any cracks in it. Well, I was all about boats. Yeah, yeah. And boats don't have any steel frames in them. Right. If you use the fiberglass correctly, I think you can do what I've proven. The car's 50 years old and it's still good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how simple cars used to be. You just strap an engine on and you got your brakes and your speedometer and you, you know, go. You got a speedometer and three switches. Right, That's right. all the Volkswagen ever had. Yeah, much like a Model T. After you put more dials in, we call them worry gauges. They yeah, make yeah. you worry yeah. because you know too much. That's right, yeah. <laughs> That's the basic design, just works so perfectly. You got enough sill here to, to keep you in the vehicle. That was a uh, committee uh, of yeah. my friends in the shop. Yeah. I had a piece of wood on a pair of clamps. Yeah. I said, you put it where you want. And after about three weeks, I, I initialed them. And that's the, where everybody had the happiest place. The, farther, it, the farther down, the easier to climb in and out, but the less protected. Is the, this all one stamping, boom? More yep. or less? Yeah. yeah. So. One spray up. Yeah. One piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't help but smile driving this thing. <laughs> 
Is that what it does? Oh, yeah. When you're 14 years old, you never think, oh, I'd be sitting next to the guy that invented it when he's 89. We have something in common. You make people laugh, I make people smile. Oh, yeah, there you go, similar. <laughs> This is the very first one. It's like driving the first Corvette or the first Mustang. And it's amazing how the, the, the manufacturer's cars are so similar to the prototype. A lot of times you drive a prototype vehicle, a lot of changes on it, but Bruce got this one right first time out. <laughs> oh, you're being awfully nice. You don't realize what an impression you had on us young kids when we were little. When you're a teenager in the 60s, that was the height of the car boom. You know that 50 years ago, the little boy would, the six-year-old say, hey, mom, look at the cool car. Yeah. Today, 50 years later, hey, mom, look at the cool car. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's timeless. Yeah, it is timeless. <laughs> wow, what a thrill this is. You know, a lot of times, you don't want to meet your heroes because they turn out to be something less than what you thought, but that's not the case here. Now, this is a guy I've been reading about since I was 14 years old and following his career. And to have him come to my garage is, is really exciting. And you know, we, we talked about, this is a guy who everybody in the world stole his idea, but I think the fact that at 89 years old, he's still having fun and driving these things shows you that uh, perseverance and a good heart is what uh, what keeps you young. So you might not have gotten rich yourself, my friend, but you made us all very rich by what you brought to our hobby. So thank you, my friend. I'm very rich. He's very rich. I'm gonna hit him up for some money. See you guys next week. <laughs>